For years, support for Israel has always brought both sides together in Washington. But there's been a disturbing change in recent years. A growing number of Democrats have started speaking out against Israel. CBN News Capitol Hill correspondent Abigail Robertson recently spoke with one Jewish Democratic Congresswoman about this dangerous trend and the stand that she's been taking even against members of her own party. When Congresswoman Elaine Luria came to Washington in 2019, she never expected her first speech on the House floor would be standing up against anti-Semitic comments made by fellow Democrats. The first of many occasions she's defended Israel during her time in Congress. I believe that I speak clearly for all fellow Jewish, fellow Jewish veterans that this echoes of language that has been used to marginalize and persecute the Jewish people for centuries. Luria, a 20-year Navy veteran, tells CBN News she finds accusations of dual loyalty misplaced. I find it shocking um, that you know other members of the House can perpetuate these tropes and, and things related to dual loyalty. And adds she's surprised how often she's had to speak out against anti-Semitism. I always viewed that uh, the U.S. support for Israel was incredibly strong. Israel's our strongest ally in the Middle East, and that you know the U.S. Congress um, was a place where that support was, you know unanimous and have come to find that it, although it is broad and bipartisan, there are some very vocal voices that unfortunately continue to get louder um, that, you know, I, we have to make absolutely sure don't undermine um, that broad support that we have for Israel. Luria believes some in her own party would prefer to say Israel doesn't have the right to exist. They've said it clearly and publicly and, you know, some of the rhetoric that has been used recently, you know, referring to Israel as an apartheid state and, you know, just different things that really overlook the unique situation of Israel, the unique security situation of Israel and Israel's need to be able to defend itself. Um, so I think that it is very concerning when elected members um, in our Congress, you know, voice those, those types of opinions. Recently, eight Democrats and one Republican voted against providing $1 billion in funding to restock Israel's Iron Dome defense system after Hamas launched more than 4,000 rockets across the border last May. It is concerning that there were a, a small number of members who felt that um, they, they couldn't support um, providing Israel with the resources to defend itself. A few years ago, Luria sat down with Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib to voice concern about her anti-Israel rhetoric. I was hopeful that moving forward um, that you know, she would change her tone um, she, and others, you know, and the, but unfortunately, you know, that group has actually grown um, both in numbers and um, in visibility. Luria says as a Jewish Congresswoman, she'll continue to fight anti-Semitism and she hopes to help her colleagues understand the importance of U.S. support for Israel. Reporting from Capitol Hill, Abigail Robertson, CBN News. Well, Congresswoman Luria is remarkably accomplished so just early in her career in Congress. Uh, the number of bills that she's gotten passed, her rise to be the vice chair of the Armed Services Committee is really incredible. A 20-year Navy veteran uh, was actually accused of divided loyalty, that somehow her support for Israel brought into her question into question her support for the United States these are incredible things incredible developments that we actually have to defend Israel's right to exist in the US Congress um, this is sort of beyond belief you, you go back in history you go back to the 1920s the British mandate what was the rationale behind that for the League of Nations it was the right of self-determination that all peoples, have a right of self-determination. And in that, they made a declaration that the Jewish people deserved a homeland, not in Uganda, but right there in Israel. And that was followed through by the UN in 1948. Israel has a right to exist. It's the only democracy in the Middle East. And they've been our staunch ally in the Middle East and against Islamic terrorism for decades. Uh, we need to support them. Here's another reason, and this is something that Congress is currently working on. How do we break the supply chain problems we currently have with our pharmaceuticals? How dependent are we on China for even our antibiotics? 
And if we can develop pharmaceutical industries in Israel, and that's the proposal, how do we make this happen? It would be a great breakthrough. Instead of one of our enemies supplying our pharmaceuticals, we can have one of our staunch allies. Uh, I would be remiss to say the anti-Semitism isn't just on the, the Democrat side. You've got to look at what Marjorie Taylor Greene said about Jewish space lasers causing fires in California. These things are incredible. It, it, the, the developments, the rise of anti-Semitism, even in our government, is, is truly unbelievable. Uh, there's a spiritual force working here. That's what the rabbis say. Every single generation, you have this rise up, and we need to recognize it for what it is, but say it shouldn't belong in Congress. It shouldn't belong in our State Department. It shouldn't belong in our administration. We need to support Israel. If you want to do that, there's a rising boycott, divestment, sanction movement, uh, ideologically driven, uh, completely funded uh, from Hamas, Hezbollah, terrorist groups. Uh, it's the boycott, divestment, sanction movement. If you want to uh, uh, find out more about how you can participate to stop it, get educated on it, uh, be a support to Israel. It's absolutely free. All you have to do is call us, 1-800-700-7000, or you can download it from cbn.com slash BDH.